Workers at Japan's Fukushima plant say the ground under the facility is cracking and radioactive steam is escaping through the cracks. The cooling system at the plant failed after the devastating tsunami hit Japan in March, sparking a nuclear crisis. But new evidence suggests that Fukushima reactors were doomed to cripple even before the massive wave reached them. Joining me now via broadband is Dr. Robert Jacobs, who's a professor at the Hiroshima Peace Institute. How alarming are these latest reports about steam emerging from the cracks under Fukushima. How serious could this get? Um, it's a very serious and alarming uh, development because uh, this started to happen specifically after two large earthquakes in the last few weeks. There was a 6.4 earthquake on the 31st of July and a 6.0 earthquake on uh, August 12th. And so what this would indicate is that there may have been some breaking of some of the pipes and some of the structures underground that happened during these earthquakes. And they, uh, there could be radioactive water that's venting into the soil. And uh, what's more, as, the, it, as cracks are opening, uh, they're making their way, the steam and uh, radioactivity is making its way up. So first of all, this will make it much more difficult for workers to work there because the problem will not be contained within the building and contained within the uh, structure of the reactor vessel. And so it's harder for workers to work in an area in which radiation is emerging from unknown and unsuspected places. And it's an indication that, uh, that radioactive material is moving uh, under the ground. Also, workers say the damage was done when the earthquake struck, not after the tsunami swept through. Shouldn't a facility like this have been much more earthquake proof, given their regularity in Japan? Um, yes. Uh, I. This, this facility, uh, you may remember, it was designed to withstand an eight-point earthquake, and what we had was a nine-point earthquake. Um, and so these facilities were designed with the best-case scenario in mind, and clearly there's much higher earthquakes are possible. Uh, so, it, yes, if it's the case that, uh, which it, there's certainly a great deal of evidence uh, that appears to suggest that the first reactor, reactor number one, was melting down by the time the tsunami hit. So if that's the case, that the reactor was melting down as a result of the earthquake and not as a result of the tsunami, a nine-point earthquake is something that has the potential to happen throughout Japan, and that would put the... Uh, reliability and the design safety of all of these reactors um, in question. And just to refer back to that uh, first point about the radioactive steam, where there's continuing to be these aftershocks. So when you have a fragile structure that's already suffered a great deal of damage and you have continual uh, aftershocks at the level of 6.0, there's, there's been some even higher. Um, what we have now is we have the radioactive core that has melted down into the basement, into the bottom of the containment vessel of these reactors. And if the radiation level is going down uh, where it's being monitored inside the buildings, and if the water pressure is going down um, and the temperature is going down, it's not as though the radiation is just suddenly going away. It means that the radioactive material, the melted core, is simply moving further away from where it's being measured. And it may have, as a result of these aftershocks, be moving uh, down out of the building itself. So that may be why we're seeing radioactive steam. Uh, and as you can see, earthquakes, even when they happen at a high level, they're not individual events. They're followed by a series of subsequent earthquakes. And so um, we're seeing now that these reactors were not safe for earthquakes, let alone for tsunamis. Uh, when is enough going to be enough? I mean, if the earthquake structurally compromised the plant and the safety of uh, its nuclear fuel, and now we have this steam, uh, another very hazardous situation, uh, when is it going to be time to close down reactors like these? Well, in my opinion, now. Uh, I think that this has, been, um, this has been a clear example of the fact that uh, natural disasters yeah. are certainly much stronger than our ability to prepare for them. Um, and th there's, there's all kinds of natural disasters that can strike plants. And so these, these reactors only function well in a perfect world in which things don't go wrong. And that's not the world we live in. So I think we need to question the viability of these reactors uh, a as a concept altogether. All right, Dr. Robert Jacobs, live via broadband with us. Thank you very much for your insight. Now, reports suggest that the reactors at the Fukushima plant were damaged by the initial earthquake and not the tsunami wave. Well, given that earthquakes are commonplace in Japan, what does this say about the safety of the rest of Japan's nuclear reactors? 
Well, I mean, the obvious response is that, is that they should actually all be shut down. I, I think most people believe this. And they also believe that it was very silly to build reactors on, on what, what is clearly a fault line and, and in an area where there are known to be um, uh, earthquakes. Uh, and, uh, and now we see the result of having done that. I mean, this, this is the obvious response. Well, in the wake of these reports, uh, what should happen now, in your opinion, to Japan's network of nuclear facilities? Well, in my opinion, of course, it, they, sh they, sh they should all be put into cold shutdown. I mean, and, and Japan, Japan should ultimately uh, give up nuclear power. It's, in fact, well, as, as you probably know, my opinion is nuclear power itself is an extremely dangerous process, and that you cannot really um, believe that you can cage these things and expect them not to come out, you know, not to have these sorts of accidents, and other accidents will occur in the future. And these accidents are so terrifying, and the consequences of them are so appalling, that really we cannot afford to choose this method of, of, uh, of generating electricity. Of course, you can't stop it just now, because that would bring the whole of Japan to a halt, because it depends so, so much on nuclear power. But then that, 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 that is a problem that has to be faced. Now, in Japan, the government uh, and the plants operator TEPCO have come under heavy criticism from uh, many quarters for the reliability of the information that they've been releasing about this disaster. Do you think that we now know the true extent of this crisis? No, I know that we don't, because I've actually visited there and I've taken uh, quite sophisticated radiation measuring equipment and I've been able to, to satisfy myself that the concentrations of radionuclides on the ground, even as far as 100 and more kilometers away from the plant, are very much higher than they've been saying. And indeed, some measurements that I've been making on air filters from vehicles from as far away as Tokyo show that the concentrations of cesium-137, for example, in these filters is more than 1,000 times higher than, uh, in terms of air concentration than the air concentration at the peak of the weapons fallout in 1963. So we're talking about serious, serious levels of radioactive nuclides. And the problem is that, that, that this is effectively being ignored by, by, by the authorities concentrating on the external dose rate. So they say, so long as the external dose rate is not more than so many microsieverts per hour or whatever it happens to be, everybody's going to be safe. In some sense, they're comparing it with natural background radiation. But actually, it cannot be compared with natural background radiation. The the, the, there's a very, very high level of contamination, even as far south as Tokyo. For example, we found one sample in Tokyo that had levels of radioactivity higher than levels inside the Chernobyl exclusion zone. It's a very serious matter. So, Professor Busby, how serious are these new cracks to the structure of the Fukushima plant? Should we be alarmed? Well, the fact that steam is coming out uh, and, and we know from measurements made in California that the steam contains uh, the isotope sulfur-35. This isotope is associated with neutron irradiation of chlorine. Uh, and so what we've got here is a situation where you've got fission taking place, an enormous neutron concentration, neutron flux, and seawater. Uh, and, 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 and effectively, we're producing very large quantities of radionuclides all the time, and they haven't been able to deal with that. I was told by somebody who, who'd heard this from a TEPCO official who was talking to the Prime Minister of Japan, who said that the releases from the plant are now the order of 10 to the power 13 becquerels every hour. So we're, we're talking about something that is absolutely ongoing and it's just, it's just being ignored. It's, being, it's, being, it's not being adequately reported by the authorities in Japan or indeed in the Atom International Atomic Energy okay. Agency. Okay, Maureen Times. Professor Christopher Busby, uh, Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, many thanks for speaking to us this evening.
notice how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing? <laughs> 